and welcome to today's flow. For today, I have a set of blocks and a blanket with me. Uh, we'll be moving through some hip mobility, staying low to the mat, and we will also be incorporating pigeon pose, which has a tendency to be a little bit more difficult um, to access depending on how tight your hips are or depending on the day. So it's nice to have some props nearby to help bring some ease to that particular posture. So whenever you have your props or whatever you'd like to use for today's class, go ahead and meet me on your mats. We'll be starting on our back. So bring, bring your feet flat, knees bent. You can go ahead and hook behind your thighs and allow your torso to slowly roll down onto the mat. Bring your heels a little bit closer towards your sit bones. Feet are going to come wide towards the edge of the mat and knees are going to knock together. Feel free to allow your arms to rest in whatever position is most comfortable. We're just going to take a few moments here to find our breath, settle in. And bring our mind and body together to help prepare for some movement today. Find some relaxation in the hips, allow those knees to really fall heavy in towards one another. We'll be moving in toward, into the hips today, as well as the side body, the core. Both the core and the muscles of the hip, they connect along the pelvis so it's good to find some mobility and create space within both of these areas at the same time feel free to even bring your legs a little bit wider or a little bit further away from you whatever gives you the space the capacity to allow the hips to relax while heavy And start to find your breath nice and slow. Inhale and exhale. And we'll take two cleansing breaths together. So finish your exhale. Seal the lips deep. Inhale as you fill the belly. Feel the rib cage rise all the way to the peaks of the lungs. Pause at the top. And open the mouth. Exhale all the way out. One more, seal the lips deep, inhale through the nose. Filling the belly, feel the lungs expand with air. Pause at the top. Open the mouth, exhale all the way out. Two more breaths to yourself. And then allow the knees to come away from one another. We're going to start with a windshield wiper back and forth. Moving at your own pace. Now that the muscles are relaxed within the hips just a little bit more than when you started, you're just going to move through some mobility, loosen things up. And you know, we're working through both the hips and the side bodies. So if you want to pause in one direction as you drop the knees towards the right, maybe feeling a little bit more length through the left side, feeling that strap go through the hip all the way through the left side body. Engaging the core through the middle as you fall over towards the other side. Then feeling that opposite sensation as the knees fall to the left, you feel that stretch through the right side. Then feeling free to pause in any spot. Again, move as slow or as fast as you would like. If you'd like to find a little bit more energy as you transition from one side to the next, that leading leg draws a little bit stronger, trying to hold that trailing leg for an extra moment or two to find that space through the inner thighs and then let the knees fall. Drawing that top leg up, 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 feeling that outer hip engage as you try to keep that right knee down, that trailing leg down, finding space through the inner thighs, falling over. Those two options, again, rhythmic movement or some more activation for five, four, three, two, one, good, come back towards center, wiggle the feet parallel towards one another, coming away from the edges of the mat. And as we warm up the hips, the legs here, 
we're going to try to do these movements without the assist of your hands. Again, feel free to give yourself support if you feel like you need it, but let's try to explore movement a little bit differently. So you can lace the hands, place them on your belly. You can have them out wide again, whatever feels good for you. And then that we're going to start with the right side. So keeping that hip at 90 degrees, lift the foot from the floor and then drive the sole of the foot up towards the sky. Feeling this space within the back side of the leg. Keeping that hip at that angle, allow the knee to soften, heel comes towards your bottom. Drive the heel up towards the sky, stretching through the back side of the leg and lower down. Go through a few more rounds here at your own pace, driving the heel up, extending the knee long, feeling the engagement of the thigh start to turn on, warm up, and try for three more rounds here. Again, moving at your own pace, really driving through the heel to create that space. One more, really push the sole of the foot towards the sky, engaging the muscles within the front of the leg. And then go ahead and soften the knee towards 90 degrees. Sole of the foot is facing the top of the mat, so you're in that 90-90 position within the right leg, left foot still on the mat. And then I just want you to spin the, the outer edge of the right foot out towards the right side. So you're rotating through the, the deep part of the hip, and then drive this, the inner edge of the sole up towards your left shoulder. Working in those little, little muscles deep within the hip to find some engagement, turning those muscles on. Push the outer edge towards the right. Inner arch towards the left shoulder. Trying to keep the hip and the knee in the same spot. So you wanna keep that stacking of the right knee over the right hip. And you just wanna spin from deep within that joint. Feeling that sensation, it's probably gonna feel a little challenging. Maybe you feel a little cramping because you're not really used to accessing those muscles intentionally. So try a few times back and forth, driving the outer edge of the, the foot up and over towards the right, inner edge up towards that left shoulder. A few more rounds here, driving out, driving in, driving out, driving in, and come back towards center. Then you can now, if you did it before, lace the hands behind your thigh and just kick that right leg to straight. Circle the ankle back and forth. Lower the right foot down, come back to a 90 degree angle. Then I want you to drive the inner arch towards your left shoulder once more. Drive, drive, drive. Feel those muscles in the hip turn on. And then rest, keep driving until you're able to rest the right ankle over the left thigh like you're coming into recline fidget. From here, you're going to allow everything, that figure four position to fall over towards the left, to let the left, the sole of the right foot come down towards the earth. And take a moment to feel the stretch of the outer hip, and keeping that length in the right side body. That left side's a little bit more shortened, but we're not collapsing, we're still exploring some space. Holding for three, four, two, and one, engage the core, bring everything back towards the center, and then allow everything to fall over towards the right now, keeping that same position, now exploring some space a little bit differently within the left hip and the left side body. If you need to bring a little bit more ease, you can always open your angles up a little bit more. You can bring that left heel away from your bottom if that feels better for you. Again, yeah, arms can be wherever they are. I keep changing, I'm kind of flailing out, giving my body some space. So again, wherever you need, we're focusing on the torso, the lower body. So however, however you need, you're able to relax your, your shoulders, your arms. Don't think much of it. Holding here for another three two and one inhale use the core to pull your body back towards center drive the inner edge of the, the foot the, the inner sole of the foot the arch towards the left shoulder lift the right ankle away from the left thigh then spin your foot back towards top of the mat drop the right foot 
makes the left. We're going to be working towards the other, onto the other side. We'll start actively if you can. Again, you can always grab hold of that left leg if you need. So bring that right, that left hip to 90 degrees, knee to 90 degrees. And then you're gonna drive the sole of the foot towards the sky. Working through the back line of the leg, then allow it to fall, keeping that hip, keeping that 90 degree angle. Inhale, drive. And exhale, lower. Inhale, drive. Exhale, lower. Inhale, drive. Finding length, really driving that heel, pulling the toes towards you as the heel drives up towards the sky. Turning that, the front of that thigh on, finding space within the back. And then just go ahead and move at your own pace. Breath to movement. Just creating space in a way that feels good for you. Again, keeping your side bodies long, keeping your spine long, even throughout this movement. You don't want to be crunched or doing anything funky. You still want to keep that length, that mindfulness throughout the rest of your body. Just move through two or three more rounds here. Keeping that hip steady and just softening and engaging through that knee is that hinge point. So that's where we're moving through, creating that activation, creating that space. One more. Then go ahead and soften, bend the knees that 90, 90 degrees. Bring the toes up towards you, just like you're going to kick the sole of the foot in front of you. So just reaching the toes up, pointing the toes up towards the sky. And then we're gonna move deeper within the hip, okay? Driving the outer pinky edge up towards the left. And then driving the inner arch up towards the right shoulder. Keeping that stack of the knee over the hip, driving the pinky edge out, driving the inner arch in, and trying to keep your sides long, trying not to crunch with it, Again, all of this movement is coming from deep within the hip. Drive that pinky edge out. Inner arch in, keeping the hip steady. I know it's a challenge. Fight to keep your body in a neutral position. Drive the outer edge out. And drive in. Keeping a gentle engagement of the core to help protect your low back through this movement. One more round, driving out. Pulling everything in. I lied one more round. Driving out. And on your next pull in, drive the inner arch as high as you can towards the shoulder, shoulder. Drive, drive, drive. And then allow the left ankle to rest on the right thigh. Coming into reclined pigeon for just a moment. And then keeping this figure four, you're gonna allow everything to fall over towards the right. Keeping that hook of the ankle over the thigh. Keeping the integrity within the sides of the body, especially that right side as we move over towards the right. And feel that space increase within the left side and within the outer edge of that hip. Maybe a gentle nudge of the, the knee, the left knee towards the top corners of the mat to create a little bit more space. Breathing into those more intense sensations within the hip. Again, we'll be moving through that quite a bit today. So just take note of where you are now. It's not gonna feel the same throughout the entirety of class. You'll start to feel a little bit more spacious. And you'll be able to find a little bit more ease. Holding here for three, two, one, engage the core, pull everything back towards middle, and then allow everything to nice and slow with control fall over towards the left side. Keeping that ankle hooked over the thigh, and feel free to change any angles, opening or closing, to bring a little bit more comfort to your body, whatever makes sense for you.
Feel how they're working into the right side body a little bit differently, working into the hip a little bit more differently. So return to your breath, breathing, filling all the way through the belly, through the lungs. Holding here for three, two, one, come back towards center, engage the core just a pinch to help you get there. And then I want you to drive the inner, the inner arch of the foot towards the right shoulder again. Hold for three, two, one, really pull it away from the right knee. Bring it back towards that 90, 90. Grab hold behind the thigh and just work through the knee just a pinch, just for a few rounds, driving the heel towards the sky. Creating space, seeing how the hip, the leg feels. Drop the heel towards your bottom, allow the left foot to meet the right. Now we're going to make our way towards a seating position, but we're going to have a little bit of fun with it. You're going to rock and roll up towards the top of your mat. But what I'm going to have you try, if you have the control or the, the space to do so, when you come up, I want you to bring your feet wide, like a wide-legged forward fold, and just reach forward. And then you're going to go ahead, bring your knees back towards your chest, roll onto your back, come back up, legs come wide, fold forward. So just take a few rounds of that, have fun with it, bring your legs as wide or as narrow as you'd like. But just working into the back, so the legs a little bit differently, a little bit more actively. And if you need to change your direction on your mat just to see what this feels like, go ahead. Again, rolling back, tucking the knees in towards you as you come up. Let the legs come wide, fold between the thighs, between the legs. And just take two more rounds or so. And your last one, just hold for an extra moment, for an extra breath. Inhale, spine long. Exhale, fold. And inhale, walk the hands back towards you. Scooch your tush back on your mat as your legs come straight out ahead of you. Wiggle the legs out. Shake them out for a moment. And as we're here, um, feel free to grab your blanket. You can put that underneath your sit bones to give you a little bit of a boost if, um, if that, you find that helpful um, in this long sitting position. So I'll go ahead and just grab that so I can show you if you choose to do that. Um, so it's just folded just to a low, medium height. Just again, nothing big, just something small and easy to give you a boost. Legs come out long. And then I want you to cross the right leg over the left. So that left leg is going to stay long. The left heel is going to come towards, the right heel is going to come towards the left hip. And then I just want you to squeeze and hug the right knee in towards your left shoulder. And just feel how that creates space for you in the outside of that right hip. Keep the spine long. So you want to keep that connection between your torso and the thigh. Again, keeping that connection to not only find a little bit more depth within the right hip, but to keep that length through the torso, through the core. And just breathing into that space. If you want to stay here, you can. Or if you want to find a little bit of a twist, engage those that torso a little bit more. You can go from that hug, keeping that connection, but trying to hook the left elbow on the outside edge of the right knee. Or you can just place your forearm along your right thigh as you kickstand the right hand behind you and pull the torso towards the right side of the room, using that connection between the thigh and your forearm to help with that twist. It doesn't have to be deep, but just working into the core a little bit more, finding some mobility through the spine. Holding for three, wherever you are for two, and one come back towards center. 
And so again, you can stay here if this is comfortable for you, if you're feeling a good stretch already. If you wanna get into the hip a little bit more, you're gonna go ahead and uh, hook the sole of the foot into the crease of your left elbow, and then you're gonna cradle your thigh, your knee with your right hand. Again, play with the angle as it suits you. If you can bring that shin to 90 degrees, great. If not, you can keep that heel hugged into your left hip. And then you're just gonna rock open and closed. So you're using your arms, your torso, to just play with some space within the right hip. Twisting over towards the left, exploring that space, opening towards the right. Again, you can keep those movements small, just bouncing left to right. Something a little bit more soothing. You don't have to explore the extremes of your depth here. It's just something fun, something different. And then come back towards center, hold here. And then I want you to basically place your right ankle just over your left knee, let go of your hold and fold forward. So you're in that figured form with that left leg extended. And you're just gonna find some space by folding the torso over your right shin, driving the right knee down towards the earth reaching the crown of the head long, keeping that spine long. For three, two, one, fold back up or unravel. Bring the right foot down towards the mat and we're gonna switch sides. So bring the left knee in, right leg straight, and then bring the left foot crossing over the right thigh. And give yourself a hug. If you are giving yourself a comfortable supportive seat, your soul, if when you hug your thigh in, your soul might come up from the floor and that's fine. Whatever allows you to explore the space within the right hip, the left hip. Just giving yourself a hug, bringing that, that left knee all the way over towards the right shoulder. And breathing into that space. Anchoring down through the sit bones as evenly as you can, right to left. And using that energy to keep the spine long and tall, side bodies open and spacious. You know, we're working through both the hips and the, the torso. So we want to be mindful of both. Just because we're finding space within the hip, we don't want to crowd our, the rest of our body down and in. We want to stay mindful, tall, strong. You can stay here if you'd like to progress a little bit further. Catch the left knee in the crease of your left elbow, and then you're gonna bring the sole of the foot to the crux of your right elbow, and then you're gonna pull it up and in, lace it, grabbing hold of opposite wrists, if that's comfortable for you. Finding a good anchor point for that sole of the foot to rest comfortably on the upper arm on the right side. And again, can be 90 degrees, or more parallel, I guess I should say, to the floor or it can be bent in, again, whatever is accessible for you. And then just rock left to right. And we are all different side to side. It may be more obvious in some than in others, but they're, you're likely gonna encounter a little bit more stiffness side to side. So just play through that, work through that best you can. Just keep your expectations, just be mindful. Don't expect everything to be completely equal or accessible. Side to side, you may need different pops. You may need less, you may need more. And that is completely normal. Just rocking side to that side again. It can be soft just to find some rhythmic motion or it can be big and slow. Whatever feels good for you as you explore your space for a few more moments. And then coming back towards center, pulling everything in, then folding forward, kind of placing your left leg just on top of the right thigh, coming into a seated figure four. And then just walking your hands forward, folding your body, 
over that left shin. Maybe a gentle drive of the left knee towards the mat. Crown of the head long, keeping those side bodies active and long for three, two, one. Walk the hands back towards you, sit up tall. Help your left leg off the right. And then just bring both legs out in front of you, wiggle them, find some space. And then if you'd like, you can prop your hands back behind you and just windshield wiper the hips side to side for just a moment. Back and forth. And come back towards center. Cross the ankles, come off your blanket if you brought yourself one. And then you're going to tuck the toes back behind you, press back down with face and dog. Now, since we worked through the hips quite a bit to start class, just see how your downward facing dog feels first time today or in today's class. We're just pedal the feet one at a time. Maybe bumping the hips left to right, stretching out left and right side. And hips and torso, that's where we're moving through today. So take an extra focus to those areas of your body as you're moving through your downward facing dog, beginning to settle into your middle, your center. Just take another breath or two to explore some movement. And go ahead and settle in, lifting the sit bones towards the sky, driving the heels, finding space within the backs of the legs, keeping that, that press, that connection that energy between the palms of the hands and the earth to keep your sides open, the torso long, the entirety of the body long and engaged. And then inhale, right leg lifts, really stretch through, drive the leg up and back behind you. And then the left knee, right knee is going to drive towards left elbow. Feel that connection. Left body stays long as you feel the core engage. As you explore that twist, inhale, right leg lifts back behind you. Feel that stretch. Exhale, drive the right knee towards the left elbow once more. Find that connection. Then kick the left leg, the right leg out, finding fallen triangle. But before we open up, find that connection of the outer, the pinky edge of that right foot. And feel that ringing of the hips. You're going to find some space within the outer edge of the right thigh. So you want to try to pull that right sit bone back behind you towards the right as the left hip faces forward. Feel that sensation for just a moment. Keep that press of the heel of the hands to give yourself some space. And then drop the back heel, then open the body up, left, left arm lifts, fall in triangle. Pressing through the outer, the outer edge of the right foot inner edge of the left foot, lift the hips high, press them up and forward for three, two, one. Close everything off, ring the hips, come onto the back toes, ring those hips together once more. Lift the left, right foot, keep that, find that contact again, right knee, left elbow. Inhale, right leg lifts. Bend the left knee, drive the right knee to right elbow. Find that connection. Feel the length within the side body so that engagement a little bit more so on the right. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, bend the left knee. Drive the right knee to right elbow. Then bring the inner arch of the right foot towards the left wrist. And then try to plant the left, the right foot. Come down. Pigeon pose. So as we come into our first pigeon pose, give your body some time to acclimate. Stay high. First, try to get that shin as parallel as you can to the top of the mat. Keep that left hip down, driving down towards the earth. And stay high up on your fingertips. Give yourself a moment here and then maybe start to walk the left toes back behind you. And pause again. If you want to walk back a little bit further, if you feel like you have that space, go ahead. Pause again. Then if you feel like you're close to the earth, 
you feel like you're nice and supported, you're able to find ease here. Go ahead and hang out there. Stay high up on the fingertips. But if you feel like you need a little bit more support, this is where the props come in. If your right hip is just hovering over the mat, go ahead and sneak that blanket underneath your right thigh. So it can come across the body as mine is here, or it can come more at an angle like this, if that feels good for you. But you're gonna wanna support the right, the, the right hip and the sit bone best you can. And stay here. If you have blocks and you're, so you might be really high from the ground, A-okay, sneak the block underneath your right hip in whatever capacity feels good. So again, it can come perpendicular to your leg bone or it can go right in line with the leg bone, whatever feels most supportive. I have mine perpendicular right now, which feels pretty good. I have more space to bring my shin parallel to the top of the mat. And it gives me more accessibility to drive the left hip down. Explore more space with a little bit more comfort. So I'm definitely feeling a really good stretch here on my right side, but I'm not fighting tooth and nail to get to it, okay? That's the nice thing about props. You can still feel the challenge without that challenge overcoming you and pushing you out of it. So whenever you find the props that feel good for you here in this moment, I'm gonna give you another three, four more breaths to settle in. Again, staying high if you'd like, or you can find a gentle fold over the right shin, if that's something that feels good for you and exploring your space. One more breath. Walk your hands back if you folded forward. Brace yourself on your right side. Lift up through the right hip. Take that prop out. You can bring the right foot in towards you. Tuck the back toes. Lift through that right leg, driving that right knee towards the elbow. Then inhale. Right leg lifts. Bend the right knee, open the hips towards the right. Pressing the right hip forward, driving the toes, the heel back behind you to find that space. Then bend the left knee, square everything off as the right knee drives outside to the right elbow. Let right foot plants outside right hand. Stay here for just a moment, come high onto the fingertips. Square off the hips. And then spin onto the heel of the back foot. And then sit the hips back, skandasana. Use the hands to get there. You can sit low, you can stay high. Feel the space, the stretch within the inner thigh. Sit here for just a moment. And then walk the hands up towards the top of the mat. Staying in your skandasana, feel that change in sensation. And then press through the back foot, drive, dig through the right heel, pull the body up towards the front of the mat, low lunge once more. Pick the right foot up, keep that contact between knee and elbow. Lift your right knee back behind you, three-legged downward facing dog. And then right foot comes to meet the left. Feel that change side to side. And we're gonna move into the left side. Inhale, left leg lifts. Bend the right knee, exhale, drive. Left knee, right elbow, feel that connection. Feel that engagement through the left side of the core while keeping the right side body long. Inhale, three like a dog. Exhale, bend the right knee, drive the left knee, right elbow. Find that connection, kick that left foot outside the right hand, and then spin the hips down. Feel that sensation on the outer thigh on the left side. As you try to pull the left hip to that back corner of the mat and pushing the right hip down towards the mat, feel that kind of ring everything out within the pelvis, holding for three. Stay engaged to the outer edge of that left foot for two. And one, spin the right heel down, lift the right hand up, fall in triangle. 
Staying strong within the left leg, pressing the hips up, up, up. Staying engaged to that left side, spacious to the right side. For three, two, one, square everything off, come onto the back toes, ring out through the hips. And then lift the right, left foot. Find that connection again between left knee, right elbow. Inhale, three like a dog. Exhale, bend the right knee, drive the left knee, left elbow. Inhale, left leg lifts. Keep the side bodies long, staying strong through the, the hands, strong through that right leg. Bend the right knee, drive left knee, left elbow. Drive that inner arch to the right wrist. Bring the left shin down, pigeon pose. Again, when you drop that left, that left leg down, Stay high, give yourself a moment to progress through pigeon pose here. You can either stay here, give yourself the supports you need, or start to walk the right toes back. Sit the hips low and pause, moving about halfway or a quarter of the way there. Again, you can now you can stay here, give yourself the supports you need, or go one step further. If you feel like you can make that connection all the way down towards the ground, go ahead. I'm going to grab a blanket, sneak that under my left hip. Again, there's always the opportunity to challenge yourself to take away as you spend time here. But you don't want to be bullying yourself over it. <laughs> so for me today, I feel a pretty solid stretch within my outer hip. Could I make contact with the floor? Probably. Would I be a little bit more uncomfortable about doing it? Probably. So for today, based on how I'm feeling, based on what I want out of today's class, I'm just gonna hang out on the towel, the blanket. And that can be a similar discussion you have with yourself. Are you ready to challenge yourself by taking a step further? Or are you really just wanting to hold a pretty solid pose? That's where you start and that's where you go to. Wherever you have your final expression, I should say, of the pose that you're in currently, you can stay high on the fingertips. If you have blankets, blocks, if you brought everything with you, I should have mentioned this before, but you can use those blocks if you stay high to reach those hands long. So you're still kind of upright, kind of folded over, supported nonetheless. As you're anchored through the left hip bone, you wanna try just a gentle drive of the right hip bone forward and down. And from that squaring of the hips, that's where you find the length through the spine, all the way through the crown of the head. And that length you're keeping, whether you're upright, whether you're forward folded, Wherever you are for three more breaths. Excellent. Go ahead and walk your hands back towards you if you came into a forward fold. Just lift through your left leg to remove any props. Tuck the back toes, press through the hands, engage the core as you lift, find that connection again between left elbow, left knee. Inhale, three-legged dog. Bend the left knee, open the hips towards the left side of the room, opening the front of the hip. So you press the left hip forward, drive the toes, the heels back behind you. Bend the right knee, square the hips off as you drive left knee to left elbow. Foot plants outside, left hand. Stay high and lift it within the back leg. Low lunge. Squaring off those hips to find a little bit of space while we're here through the front of the right leg. Then drop the back heel. Sit your hips back, coming into Skandasana to the right, using the hands to get you there. Again, staying high in a, like a side lunge or low in your skandasana. 
just finding space through the inner lining of the left leg. Keeping the toes up towards the sky. Start to walk the hands towards the top of the mat. Feel that brief change in sensation, that deepening within the inner thigh. As you dig through the left heel, press through the back foot. Come back up towards the top of the mat. Low lunge. And drive the right heel back behind you. Stay tall and lift it. Plant the hands. Reintroduce that connection between left knee, left elbow. Press back. Three-legged dog. Left leg lifts. Exhale. Downward facing dog. So we've explored a lot of depth, a lot of engagement through the hips, through the side body, through the torso. We're going to move through that same transition, but with a little bit more flow. You know where we're going for the most part, but I will still cue you through the points that we're going to be hitting. But again, same flow, same transitions. Just one more round. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale. Right knee, left elbow. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee, left elbow. Keep that drive, that connection as the right leg extends. Square the hips down towards the earth. Feel that ringing through the pelvis, through the, low, the inner, the deep parts of the hips. Spin the left heel down, open everything up, fall in triangle. Stay, feel that engagement, turn on a little bit stronger through the right side body as it keeps you up and lifted. Drive the hips up high. Close everything off. Spin onto the back toes, ringing out the hips. Make that connection back between the left. Elbow, right knee. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Inhale, three-legged dog. Drive right knee, right elbow. Spin the inner arch towards the left wrist. Lower everything down, pigeon pose. Again, still taking those moments to breathe through and slowly extend to your greatest expression today. We will hang out here for three more breaths. We're getting right to it. Hopefully you found a spot to hang out in that feels good for you. One more breath. Walk the hands back up, tuck the back toes, press through the back toes and the hands, drive the right knee back towards the right elbow. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, bend the right knee, press the right hip towards the right side of the room, open up. Close everything off, drive the right knee, right elbow, but plants outside right hand, low lunge. Sink the hips low. Pull the chest forward, pulling the left hip up and forward. Spin onto the back heel, walk your hands back, coming into Skandasana. Feel that space within the right inner thigh. Press through your back foot, dig through the front heel, come back, low lunge. Let the hips sink, feel that length, that space for a moment. Right foot lifts, keep that connection, right knee, right elbow. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. One more side. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, bend the right knee. Drive left knee, right elbow. Find that connection. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, drive left knee, right elbow. Keep that connection as the right, left leg extends. Twist the hips down. Feel that space within the outer side of the left leg. Spin the right heel down, open up, fall in triangle. Staying lifted through the hips, engage to the left side body. Close everything off, spin onto the back toes. Bring it all out. Drive. Left knee, find that connection once more before you transition back. Three-legged dog. Exhale, drive left knee, left elbow. Find that connection. Feel strong and lifted. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, drive. Left knee, left elbow. Left inner arch to left right wrist. Drop down, pigeon pose. Find the supports you need. Maybe feel a little bit more open and come a step down, progress a little bit further. But you know where you're going. You know what props you used last time. 
So no need to change it up. You can keep it all the same. Trying to square up the hips best you can. Gentle engagement, gentle press of the right hip bone forward. Stay higher, walk the hands out. Here for three more breaths. Walk the hands back underneath you, tuck the back toes, press through the hands, drive left knee, left elbow. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, bend the left knee, open the hip towards the left side of the room. Press the left hip forward, drive the toes and heel back. Close everything off, drive left knee, left elbow once more, left foot plants outside, left hand. Low lunge. Feel the space within the right side as you sink the hips lower, driving the right heel back. Spin the left, right heel down towards the earth, sit the hips back, skandasana, walk your hands to get you there. Left toes lift towards the sky. Finding that space. Start to walk the hands back towards the top of the mat. Feel that change in sensation as you pull the body forward, low lunge. Just for a moment, feel that space, sink the hips. Chest reaches forwards, crown of the head reaches tall and long to the space above you. Press through the hands and the back toes. Make that connection, left knee, left elbow. The left leg lifts, three-legged dog. Exhale, downward. Facing dog. And take a breath to settle into your downward facing dog for one moment. And then drop the heel, drop the knees. Untuck the toes, hips, heels. Come into a tall kneel. Excellent work today, you guys. Just a few more movements to help keep that space within the hips. So starting from hips to heels, plant the fingertips beyond the toes, and then press the hips forward, opening the front of the body, letting the shoulders roll open, chest pull and peel towards the sky. Gaze lifts up. Exhale, sit the hips down. Return to that kneeling position. Right, right fingertips reach beyond right toes. Sweep the left arm up and across the body. Press the hips forward once more. Reach the left fingertips back behind you. Opening the front of the, front of the body once more. Exhale, sit the hips. Keep that motion fluid. Left fingertips beyond left toes. Sweep the right arm up and forward. Reaching towards the space behind you. Opening the front of the hips once more. Exhale, sit. Hips low, one more time each side. Inhale, left arm reaches up and overhead. Exhale, sit low. Sweeping towards the left side, right arm reaches up and over. Press through the shins, the tops of the feet to open the front of the hips even more. Exhale, sit the hips low. Cross the ankles, bring your hips, sit bones towards the earth. And lower. All the way down, coming back onto our backs. And as you come back onto your back, start to windshield wiper the legs, the knees once more side to side. Feel maybe the ease or the ch just general changes in how your hips feel transitioning through this rhythmic motion. Come back into center. Just hug the knees and towards the chest for just a breath. And then we're going to come into our final resting pose. Again, just opening the fronts of the hips as we come towards the end of class today. So two options. You can either bring the soles of the feet together, allow the knees to fall wide. Coming to a reclined butterfly. You can always end here. Or if you want to take advantage of your props today, you can come into a supported bridge. So for me, I'm just gonna use one block. You can always grab two, again, depending on the degree of opening you're looking for, okay? 
and coming back onto your backs. You're gonna press through your feet, lift your hips, and then you're gonna place the block in the lower part of your spine, that triangle bone right at the base there. And again, you can add a second one just to find a little bit more opening. You can keep the knees bent, soles of the feet on the earth, or you can extend the legs long. And just different options depending on your accessibility, your comfort level. But no matter where you end up, just want to find some opening through the front body. And taking in all of that activation, that effort that was created throughout class. If you are in a lower supported bridge, you can always open the knees in that recline butterfly, just the same. Again, options are good. Hopefully not too many options where you don't know where you want to spend your time. But based on those two or three options I ran you through, one hopefully speaks to you a little bit more than the others. Again, don't rush it. Give yourself the, the time and space to make adjustments. To feel it feels good. Maybe something did seem really awesome and then you get into it and it's just like, yeah, no, not today. <laughs> That's okay. Give yourself the freedom to explore how your body feels day to day. It's a fun thing about yoga in general, not only do you get to work through movements that are very different than your day to day, it's also very different from day to day just for you. Your hips, your spine, your shoulders. Every time you step on the mat, your body is likely to arrive in a different variation than you were used to the day or the practice before. And that just gives us the opportunity to learn a little bit more about our bodies. Not only to, to learn about the differences that can show up as we come onto our mat, but how to approach that and how to move through that and how to make the changes that we need to find comfort and ease through our practice. So in whatever final rest or position of comfort you found to end class today, please try to stay there for at least four or five more breaths to let all that energy settle in and, and spread throughout your body. Let, the, let your body spread the wealth through the hips, the core. You worked a lot um, through that space, um, a lot of activation. So please give your body the chance it needs to find some rest. Thank you so much for practicing with me. And I look forward to seeing y'all next time.